Hi everyone, um, welcome to another episode of the uh, the William Bonney weekly podcast. Um, it's a little bit more weekly than the last one. Um, I left everyone for three weeks last time. <laughs> so I apologise, I've been working hard and uh, this isn't my day job funnily enough. So uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, hopefully I'm, I'm trying to get a couple recorded before they're needed um, so I can at least get them out to you um, on time rather than uh, trying to do them at the last minute. So uh, yeah, apologies, but here's another one for you. Um, I've brought along my uh, my female as well. Thanks. <laughs> to, uh, to help me with this, because today I was gonna, uh, I just wanna do a quick one about um, conflict at work and uh, falling out with people in the workplace, because it's something I seem to do quite a lot. And it seems to be a reoccurring theme. It doesn't always affect me. I can work years at places, but there always seems to be someone at every workplace uh, that I end up butting heads with um, and falling out with at some point. And I, d I don't think it happens that often, but then when you think back over my each job, there's always been someone at every workplace I've worked. Who did you fall out with at the first call centre job? The first call centre, it would have been... Um, I kind of... When I got made an account manager, um, I then when the two new managers came in, remember the two Janes? Oh, yeah. And then I suddenly started being a prick because they didn't really know, they were just managers and they didn't really know what we did. So they kind of just started being really authoritarian. So I kind That's of bucked against problem. that. Yeah, I kind of you, bucked against it when I didn't, I didn't respect them because <clears throat> I, I didn't think they knew what they were doing and they were trying to tell me what to do. So no. I didn't respect them. So that's why I kicked off and I bucked and I didn't. Um, we also don't like people of authority anyway. I have you a problem have... with authority as, you know, I don't have a problem as long as they go along with me. You know, as soon as they start trying to control me, then I have a problem, yeah. <laughs> if my authority does what I want them to, then we're fine. <laughs> like so my manager, a puppet. Like my manager today asking me what time I wanted to finish. <laughs> now, he's a manager we can work with. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, I mean, it, like I was say, it's something that happens reoccurring. I'm sure I've talked about it on this podcast before. Um, so it's not a new theme, but it's it's bucked its head again this week. So I thought it'd be nice and fresh to uh, to talk about it again and maybe have a look at a bit of uh, insight and and how things have been different this time. So, um, all right. So full kind of story. I, I work at a commercial laundry currently. Uh, we we clean sheets and fucking pillows and towels and and everything for hotels across the southwest. And uh, it's a, it's a it's a hard crappy job. Um, so sometimes. You know, especially because this was in the summer I started there, and I think it was in the first two or three weeks of me being there. Um, it's hot, it's hard work. And me and this other lad, uh, I say lad, he looks like an old paedophile. He fucking, me and him sort of butted heads. <laughs> um, oh, wow. And uh, since then, we haven't really worked together. The kind of, the managers have kept us apart, um, which is to my detriment, because I've been in a hotter, sweatier, shittier part of the factory. Um, and I've often kind of, while well, I've been up there, you know, moping in my misfortune um while i've been up there i've i've often thought that if i'd handled that situation better when we first butted heads then i wouldn't be stuck up here you know i'd be downstairs with a bit of breeze on me you know just emptying out shitty hampers rather than uh handling shitty towels so yeah no i did i did genuinely think that if i'd handled the first situation better then i wouldn't be in a shitty situation in my job so i knew i'd done something wrong even if, like, I wasn't in the wrong... So, I mean, rather than, you know, forgetting about who's wrong and right, I, I handled the situation wrong by, you know, compounding the conflict. If I'd just been more wanting to deal with it rather than compounding it. Deal with it in what way? So resolving it is what I mean, rather than... Because, like, um, like I mentioned earlier, I've kind of taken the attitude, of, as long as I don't fight and as long as I don't kick off to the point of, you know, spitting and kicking and... That's me being restrained and an adult. So I can be gobby and I can go to that line of everything apart from aggression and still be like, hey, I'm, I'm reformed, I'm changed, what the fuck, you know. <clears throat> Whereas <clears throat> what I actually, well, even just being, even just acting, so even just acting up is, is wrong. So even just being gobby, being sarcastic, pushing too far, pushing it's people's buttons no, is wrong. It's just no... Where where's it gonna get you? Exactly, exactly. So There's no and that, point. And that's what I found, you know, because 
even in my sales jobs, I've been fairly good at them, but I've never really got much further than kind of a senior position within the little sales team. I've never managed to just kind of get into a management where I can just kick my feet up on a desk somewhere. I've never got that far because I've always burnt out long before I've got there. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I think, uh, again, so, so, so to this week, what's happened in the last couple of days is uh, me, and this, uh, me and this same fella have butted heads again and uh, it's ended up with a situation where he's been yelling in my face, um, calling me a fucking knob, blah, blah, blah. And I genuinely don't think I've done anything to deserve it this time. Um, I think he's just wound up. He may have been having a shitty day. He might have a shitty life. I don't know. Um, and, uh, you know, he's probably got to sign a register a couple of times a week. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, he's, he's, uh, he, you know, he's quite, quite pent up and, and frustrated and he might just have been having a go at me for that. I don't know. So I've tried to be as restrained as possible. I haven't given him any shit back. And, you know, I said to him, if, you, if you're fucking this unhappy with me, go and see a manager. And he didn't want to go and see a manager. So I did. I went and got the manager and I uh, I came back so we could try and resolve it. And uh, and we ended up all getting sent home while they review the CCTV. Um but it turns out the CCTV hasn't been recording for like the last fucking month. So it's nobody... a piss take it. I'm I know. Fuming. I know. So there's no, there's, it's just, just going to be basically my word against his and we're both going to be told to just fucking wind our necks in and stay, stay away from each other. Um, but it's, uh, I think I've dealt with it in the most responsible way I've ever dealt with anything in my life. You've dealt with it very well too fair. Because I didn't kick off. I didn't gob off. I didn't become sarcastic. I didn't call him a paedophile. This is a, a fucking world's first in my eyes. And it's the first time you. it's ever happened in my life. You, and uh, you don't take things normally lying down. And then because my manager um, wanted to do something about it, he, he asked me to give a statement and kind of uh, an email it over to him. And this has made me feel like a snitch. <laughs> and <laughs> it has burnt inside of me. Honestly, it feels like do you know in the scene in in the scene um in uh that one that that with that that woman's tied to the bed and she's possessed. Oh, mi- uh, is it misery? It's not misery. No. That's the dude tied to the bed. That one. Oh, she's fucking... tied to the bed. What's that? Oh, it's it's she's a, she's got the devil in her. The Exorcist. The Exorcist. Fucking hell. That one, the, yeah. The bur- she was a little girl. She wasn't little. She was. She was about twelve. Was she twelve? She wasn't very old. I thought she was a woman tied to a bed. No, she was. Okay. She's only young. I'm sure she wasn't very old. Well, the thing is, you know, they, uh, uh, you know, that's I've forgotten what the point was. Now. <laughs> Fuck. Oh yeah, no. That's what I felt like. Is uh, you know when she's like raging when they're throwing the holy water on her and she's like, ah, that's what it's felt like me giving this statement. But it's, this is what normal people do. This is how normal people deal with situations. This is the first time you've had, had to do it since oh, no. you've what? 30, how old are you? 39? 39, 39 years now. and you've just finally grown up. I oh, know. <laughs> but this is the first time because, like, obviously telling on anybody has been my number one rule is and you don't do it. And this just feels like I'm telling. Um, <laughs> but it's, you know... I'm and telling. It's, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. I know, but that's how I've lived my life, honestly. But just a grown up version. Instead of calling it telling, you call it snitching. <laughs> but it's um, yeah, no, and it's been honestly just tearing at me. But and it's been a nice exercise uh, in just seeing what doing what the, the supposed right thing. Let's let's do the right thing by the book and then see what happens. Um, now I'm not even expecting too much because, like I say, the the cameras don't work, and they're just going to go right. There's nothing to back up what either of you are saying because he's not going to go. Ah, oh, yeah, no, I agree completely with what William says, and uh, I hold my hands up. Is he? He's going to go, he's a lying bastard, and I'm going to get everyone to tell him different. Yeah. So, yeah, no, it's it's not going to get resolved. So we're just going to be told to stay away from each other again, and, uh, and sort our heads out. But I believe that I still did the right thing by not even being gobby to him, because I've just allowed him to run his course and do his thing. It's not worth it. Exactly. What are you going to gain by gobbing off and saying something? Well, it you might always make you gain you feel that. Yeah, that's exactly what you gain. Yeah, you, it makes me feel better. It's that little personal gain, but it doesn't get me anywhere because I don't better the situation. And it's always because it just makes me want to then because I'm still a the kind of bell end that would turn up at his house to kind of resolve it, or if I bump into him in the shops, you know, just to kind well, of. What is that going to 
What are you going to gain out of that? Because I get to crush him. But there's no point. What's the point? Because that's what... That is the point. You have to... I have to win. I have to defeat him. Oh, fucking hell. No, there's more... No, like... Just need to go... You're a dickhead. Fucking move on. <laughs> you've, you've done the right thing by... Like... Um... Talent on him. <laughs> <laughs> by telling on him. Yeah. No, you have to be fair. Because, uh... You can't go around fucking treating people like that. No, no. And setting like talking to people like, because I wouldn't fucking stand for it if someone started gobbling off and like fucking coming on to me. Have you ever had any instances at work where you've fallen out with people at the workplace? And how have you dealt with that? <laughs> of course I have. <laughs> the last couple of weeks. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> and uh, and how did you deal with that? Ah, oh, uh, which one? Which time? Uh, the first one. Oh man, that was that was uh, that was a bit of a shit show. To be fair, I uh, basically called out an employee for lying about being off sick, and uh, I got bollocking for it. I, I got a proper bollocking for it. And why did you call them out? Because they were lying. <laughs> what made you think they were lying? Because all over fucking Facebook. So this person put pictures on Facebook of them going out and then called in sick for work. Yep. And you called them out for it. Yeah, and then I got shit for it. And you got you got shit for it. So I was just like, was yeah. it your manager? Oh, don't say that. <laughs> Nobody knows who we are. <laughs> so uh, you called out your manager. Yeah, I called for, out my uh, manager. Got wow. a bollocking for it, and I still stand by my statement that I just said what I saw. And you think I have a disrespectful authority? I just said what I fucking saw. It's not my fault. Hang on. The thing is, I got fucking <laughs> snitched on. That's the piss thing of it all. Someone told on you. Fucking witch. <laughs> yeah, she fucking told on me. She told my manager. And then I got bollocking for it. It wasn't just me. It was a couple of other girls got bollocking for it, for it as well. They all came out of the office crying. I came out laughing. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, it's like, oh, it's going on your permanent record. I'm like, do you think I'd give a fuck? <laughs> and she, like, I just couldn't care less. Oh, no. I just couldn't care less. But I didn't let it affect me. I did, I was proper receiving for, for a couple of days, don't get me wrong. So you might have let it affect you then? I did, but I didn't let it show. <laughs> it didn't let it show. You just have to sit there going, you fucking... Just muttering under your breath every fucking minute like oh, no one's around me you fucking lazy cunt <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah but you just have to let it go and let it go over the top of your head because now she's alright with me and she's yeah <clears throat> so you let it go over your head you didn't didn't try to react in any way no just just have to get on with it we'll see, what are you going to prove I need my job I'm not going to sit there kicking off about it anymore yeah I'll well, just go on with it. This whole tough guy facade, even though I was, you know, even just trying to be the gobby tough guy, I suppose. <clears throat> I've tried to pull it back from being the violent tough guy to being kind of the assertive gobby tough guy, and it still doesn't get you anywhere. I still end up being a fucking. Mm. I was, I'm the best salesman they'll never promote because <laughs> I'm always letting myself down. I wouldn't mind if I was being gobby, but I wasn't. I was just, you know, I'm like I just say it as it is. <laughs> um. So what was the other time that you uh, you got into you got into conflict to work then? The second oh. time. It's, well, it's not really com. Well, it is because it's fucking doing my in. Um, I job share with somebody, and the person I job share with is fucking lazy, <laughs> and just leaves all the shitty jobs for me, and just does what she wants, and it's just really starting to bug the shit out of me. I've tried to kind of like, le- like suggest things. And go, oh, maybe if you do it this way, maybe if you do it that way, we, c- you know, it'll be all right. And then you know, do this, do that for me, and I'll do that. Yeah. But doesn't doesn't wash with her. She sit there. She'd rather sit there making fucking posters every day. So um, it it fucking. Hey, you know how much it upset me and how much it was eating me up inside. I was thinking, I'm either going to have to say something to her and it's going to really upset her or I go to my manager and go, she's fucking lazy and not doing anything. Did or you try I, and speak to her first? I did. I said, you know, I said, prioritise your workload. I said, try and do this, this and this. And it just goes over the top of red. 
<laughs> like, it doesn't fucking compute with her. Yeah. So it was really winding me up. But, but the thing is, I know if I said anything to her, it would upset her that she that I thought that. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And I don't want to upset her. And I, you know, I've, I've <clears throat> excuse me. I appreciate that. I don't want to make. I don't want to upset her by what I'm saying. Yeah. But even though it's winding me up to the point it takes up a lot of my headspace at the minute, and I know I go on about it a lot, but it does. It just it it really bugs the shit out of me, and I don't know how to process it. So yeah, I had to go to my manager. So you told on her. I did. Ah, oh, I did. It, it upset me, but it upset <laughs> me though. It really did. Yeah. But I don't know how else to kind of like get it across that it, our jobs are not being shared out fairly so you're doing more of the shared job than she is 100 percent, absolutely 100 percent. i would everybody comes to me for stuff so i would say it makes me feel like i'm like her manager i'm like micromanager do you want to do you want to wanna be a manager is i would that, love to be the admin manager it'd be great fun is that why you're uh fuck yeah we can have a little party to the station we covered. <laughs> <laughs> so there's two really different ways of dealing with things there. Um, I'm much more... I was much more aggressive. I love confrontation. I loved... Used to love confrontation. Um, and I'm much more... Now kind of... Just been kind of more gobby. But now I've just had to kind of even reel it back now. To just kind of like... I'm tired of this shit. You know, we're at work. Let's deal with it officially. Um, yeah, even how much it pains me, but I suppose, you know, that's just because it's setting a new trend. Whereas you're much more soft about it, but you're still. You gotta pick your battles. Yeah. Like I said to you the other day, you gotta pick your battles, and it's like, you gotta figure out what's more important. <clears throat> Indeed. Indeed. What you need, yeah, and try not to let it get in your head. Like take up too much headroom because, yeah, stuff. Do you know you over process stuff and you are overthinking everything? And that's the thing I've always tried. To, I'm trying to step back more now because, um, obviously, it's it's really difficult to kind of process at the moment that this is just a moment in time that doesn't mean anything. You know, it's just a job, and uh, in ten years' time, you're going to look back at this and you you're barely even going to remember the situation you're in, let alone. You know, the, the the standout moments in our life are barely going to be even glimmers in our memory. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's just oh, yeah, I won't be a working, waste of energy. I won't be working where I am five years' time. Mm. So yeah, conflict at work. It's uh, it's an interesting one. Um, that uh, it's obviously I'm going to need some more work. But it'll be uh, interesting to see how it goes with this whole process and what actually uh, comes out of it. So the next thing I wanted to uh, have a quick look at um, was something that's been in the news recently and, uh, and popped up again a few days later uh, is the uh, sentencing of Emma Tustin and Thomas Hughes. The, I mean, parents is probably a loose word for them. The scumbags who inflicted horrendous amount of pain and suffering on that poor lad. What was his name, Arthur? Yeah, yeah Arthur. poor little boy. How old was he? Six. Six. Jeez. It's fucking horrible. I watched the video of like the um the morning of the, I think the dark the day he died or something, and they made him sleep on the floor in the lounge, and it took him like six minutes to get or oh, something stupid like that. So a, a long time for him to actually be able to stand up because he couldn't fucking move properly because he wouldn't feed him and you could hear him saying on the thing on the must be like a baby monitor or something nobody loves me nobody's gonna feed me and it's just like it's fucking heartbreaking it's sad isn't it it's really sad yeah they could do that to that poor little boy she was an evil fucking bitch it happens so often and it's um you know you, you've got the mitigation that she's a stepmom, so it's not evil. maternal maternal but it's you, you see it so often with um, with women and and obviously parents as well that are maternal and paternal that end up abusing their family. I mean, because it's uh, they've been sentenced and um, 
Emma's been given 29 years and Arthur, uh, Thomas got 21 years for manslaughter. So, yeah, she'll be doing the whole 29 years of that plus more. You know, she'd be, even if she got out fairly early, she'd be looking at probably 30, 35 years. I hope she fucking rots. Mm. But it's already being looked at by the, um, by the Board of Appeal. It's been referred for not being long enough, uh, which is, which is bizarre because I would say that they were long sentences anyway, but they're being referred and referred so quickly for not being long enough. Um, we won't go over the the kind of the the any of the the details of the case, but he received a horrific, life ending brain injury. Um, and when you watch the video, there is a video that the son put up. I saw, and it shows the minute she's getting when the police turn up, and she's recounting it to the you know to the police officer and. She was just kind of quite coldly saying that he was, you know, beating his own head off the floor, and uh, and then she goes quite quickly into saying about how, you know, he's six and she's, and apparently this, you know, he is a nice looking lad, you know, in the pictures, and uh, apparently he's battered the rest of the family and he batters her and head butts him and, I mean, fuck me, I don't know, I don't, I don't know any ten year olds that could batter an adult. <laughs> I can. Yeah, I, I don't play six year old. Yeah, I mean, come on, how hard is a six year old kicking and fighting? I mean, I mean, let's for 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 a, for a second believe believe that anything that she was saying was true. I mean, you've got a really aggressive, possibly autistic child who kicks and fights. I mean, that is difficult. But at no point are you going to be overwhelmed by a six year old, ever. Mm. And it's just down. I mean, she had two kids of her own, so it's not like she's not she a parent. Fucking taken off of her. Because no, she's bloody useless. Well, then I, I, I'd forgotten that. So maybe, you know, maybe she isn't uh, all good. She's not. She's just evil. She's horrible. Horrible woman. Now the thing is, she refused to even turn up for sentencing. And didn't you say she tried committing suicide or something? Yeah, she didn't fucking do it. Then the thing is, is because as well, she may, you know, we we know she's going to be on the protection wing, but that doesn't mean that she's completely separate. I mean, I don't know what the setup of the jail is that she's in but most wings normally face each other or you're normally within shouting distance um i remember hearing a story actually about a couple of lads i was with um were in the same prison as gary glitter at one point wow and they used to shout and give him shit and abuse all the time um because the block that he was on was facing like the main wing and they fucking knew he was over there and they possibly even seen him in the cell windows and shit you know because you might be able to look down and see him so yeah they used to give him shit and abuse all the time so I imagine she's probably being tormented because even the the women in prison aren't going to stand for that. You know, they're going to be giving her fuck. Apparently they've been spiking her food with salt. Yeah, they, oh, <laughs> that's Divine fucking brilliant. Fucking ju- justice in a way. Oh, I hope they keep fucking tormenting and her as well. they will do, every day. Because they're, they're, they'll, be, they'll be women there that are nasty bits of work that obviously won't stand for that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's made me fucking feel warm inside that house, actually. She's just horrible, they're both far. He's just a dopey bollocks as well, the, the bloke. The fact he's been done for manslaughter, um, <clears throat> I don't know, it's... He didn't, like... Because obviously he's just standing by and letting it happen. Or he's, he's taking part in it. I mean, but he didn't intend to kill us, kill him, so... I think he was taking part in it. Like, if you read, the beatings he definitely was, I think. If you read the articles and stuff, um, they used to send each other text messages and like voice memos and stuff when either of them left work left for work or something and I think the one the day before the little boy died he said to her oh just end him or something like that yeah it's not good is it and that's his like, that's his paternal that's his dad yeah yeah it's not good well and then social services the police the school everything failed him yet again social services have failed a child and a child has died because they're so fucking useless I know I know when is it going to stop when is when is something going to happen that people go actually you know I'd rather somebody reported something than think oh fucking hell that you know they but people should... do people, no, to be fair people do report things all the time and people report kids when they're not um, in any danger as well. So it's really difficult for social services to make the judgment. But I don't understand when... He, apparently he was covered in bruises and they just took pictures of the bruises or they got copies of the bruises and then just didn't do anything about it, said he was in a happy home or something like that. So yeah, yeah no, it was, it was school, a massive failing. The school no- noticed that his like 
um, behaviour started deteriorating and stuff. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, he was failed massively, that, that little boy. There was a really uh, touching tribute um, paid, played up and down the country um, where in the sixth minute they uh, they all stopped and had a, a massive cheer and a round of applause and things, which I thought was really nice. Yeah, man. Football can be good sometimes. He was a Birmingham City fan. Didn't deserve what he, what happened to him. He didn't. And, um, you know, she didn't look very old. I don't know how old, how old that Emma, whatever her shit name was. She's fucking old enough to know better. No, I know, but she's going to be... She didn't look very old, so she's in the majority of her life in prison. And, you know, be an old age pensioner when she comes out, essentially. Good. But if she ever does come out, I mean... Who knows? But, uh, yeah, she's going to spend most of her adult life in prison. And probably hiding in prison as well, because she won't... Imagine, I don't know, it's a weird one, do paedophiles hate child killers? I mean, because they seem to be sort of... They'd be, they'd be natural enemies, wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's one to, one to one for maybe yeah. another, ty- another podcast. Um, so anyway, yeah, thank you very much for helping me out today. Miss, Miffy, Mrs. That's right, love. I'm proud of how you've dealt with it. To, you've not dealt with it in your u- usual... Um, Aggressive manner. ...happening self. I know it's sort of... It, it does eat you up inside, because, I mean, I was like it when I had to sort of, like, speak to my manager about how I'm coping with stuff at work. And, you know, it, it's not pleasant. You don't want to get your mate and shit, but... At what point do you go, enough's enough, you know, I've tried my best, I've tried to do the right thing and help you out and cover up your mistakes, and I'm not I'm not going to carry on doing it. Yeah. Because, it, yeah, it, you've got to be fair. You've got to be each other out, it can't just be one way. Exactly. So anyway, thank you very much for uh, helping me out today. Sorry, love. And we'll uh, we'll speak to you again very very soon. So share, like, subscribe. Stay out of trouble. Send it to your friends. Send everybody. Send this to one person you know, and they'll thank you for it. All right. <laughs> speak to you again soon. Cheers now. Bye 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 bye. Bye.